Hi, my name is John Gruber, and I wanted to offer a short presentation on creating small learning communities. It's an important part of the work we do as educators, and in the Health Career Academy, where we're entering into classrooms and sharing health science and medical education and public health work, it's really a wonderful approach to allow us to come into those spaces with the intention of building a small learning community in the time that we have with the students that we work with. So I wanted to share just a few things that might be helpful for medical students who are going into high school communities and working on building a small learning community within the classroom. So maybe the most important word here is community and the emphasis that we might put in communities on relationships. By working with a small learning community, we're creating the opportunity to establish real relationships with the students that we're working with. And when we do that, and when we do effective community building, research has shown that there are a lot of different positive outcomes in the learning that come from building a feeling of a community, a place where people feel connection and really feel known and supported by the peer educators or by the teachers who are there to work with them. In schools where students are often profoundly underserved in their science education, the Health Career Academy can influence some of the key issues where students struggle. In many schools where we work, poor attendance, high dropout rates, and a real feeling of disconnectedness are hallmarks and tough realities of the school life. Small learning communities have been shown to help increase student attendance, deepen student participation and dialogue, measurably increase student achievement in academic areas, all while providing a much stronger sense of relevancy and meaning in the student's assessment of the value of being in school. In my school, we've created a small science learning community for the past 10 years in the form of an optional seminar for students who are interested in doing a deep dive in different science topics, ranging from climate change and astronomy to human evolution and genomics. We've learned some important lessons, and we've been struck by students reporting that even with as little as 30 minutes of contact time each week over just six months, this seminar and the learning experience has been one of the most influential, meaningful, and enjoyable experiences of their secondary school career. And I believe a lot of that comes from our ability to build a small learning community where students feel really connected and deeply valued. It can be really valuable to let the students know that they are part of something special. This sense of belonging, of membership in a community, is very significant in allowing the students to feel that this is an opportunity that has come along, that we all are joining in together, and that has a very particular purpose and mission. It's interesting to see what happens when we build a community we're at the heart of what we're doing, we're having a good time. We're actually enjoying each other's company, we're laughing, we're sharing stories, we're talking about the issues at hand, but at the center of that really is this learning, learning about science issues, learning about public health and medicine, and thinking about our own futures. Along the way, though, we really should be enjoying the experience because we feel connected. Wherever you can, it's worth working to provide evidence that really shows students that they are valued. The students are why we're there. Pointing out the significance of what they're doing, recognizing the accomplishments in what they're learning, and even offering things that remind them that they're important, they're at the heart of the program. We actually buy bagels and donuts for our seminar group each week. We give them special seating at the annual visiting scientist lecture. And before introducing the scientists, we recognize their work. We ask them to stand and be acknowledged. It's important that the students realize that the Health Career Academy really exists for them and that as they work and as they build their understanding and their practice, that we point to the progress and the growth that they're making and let them know that it's significant and important. Every community is really built on relationships, so the act of cultivating relationships is central to building an effective learning community. Find ways to get to know who your students are. Find ways to get to know what they want from the experience. Share some pieces of yourself. Let them get to know you a little bit better. Listen carefully. Work at building trust by listening so that the students know that you're interested in their lives and their future. 
And finally, if you have any opportunity to advocate for your students, to step up and help them achieve what they want, to step up and give them another opportunity or make a connection for them, any advocacy on your part for them to actually reach their potential is something that's appreciated by everybody in the community. A community really thrives when everybody in the community does have a shared sense of purpose. So it can be helpful to make the mission and the vision of what the program is trying to accomplish explicit rather than implicit. Come right out and say, these are the goals of what we're trying to do. This is what we'd like to offer. And establish some ground rules by creating a culture where everybody shares that common vision and purpose. When we do that, it becomes a lot easier to convince everyone that the time that we're spending is really meant to serve something that we all have agreed is something we're trying to aim for. There are lots of things in high schools that can be discouraging. We can find all kinds of obstacles and challenges, and it's easy to lower our expectations of what might be accomplished. If you create a culture of engagement, though, and if you maintain high expectations, you can show the students that your high expectations are what you're inviting them to step into. Learning vocabulary, practicing their own presentation and speaking, understanding the concepts involved in the medical science and the health science. None of these things are beyond the reach of your students, but you need to maintain those high expectations and then provide lots of support so they can try and they can practice and they can get to a place where they really can take pride in their ability to meet those expectations with the support and with the encouragement of the students and the mentors who are there to teach them. Finally, the students are really looking for a commitment. They're looking for consistency and someone they can believe in. So honor your commitment to the students in the program. If you're expected to show up and be there for a class or be there, it's something that students may really be looking forward to. And sometimes we know that even though we had something on the schedule, something changes and we're not able to make it on that day. It might be something out of our control, something that the school has changed. If something changes, please try to find a way to make it up to the group. Let them know that this is something you still want to make happen. But make sure that your students are clear that your commitment is to be there for them and to really work through the program that we have offered and meet the expectations that we've created. It's a great program and I think if you build a small learning community, the students will never forget the experience they had as they got to dig in and really work together to understand aspects of public health and medical science and think about how it might impact their own vision for their career choices in their future life.